hello everyone i hope you are doing well i'm your host miss kk and this is the wave it is your weekly show that looks at topics related to personal family and business finances and our hope is that by the time we get to the end of this series you are really better equipped to make sound financial decisions if you are new here thank you so much welcome and if you are already a returning subscriber a warm appreciation to you guys for always stopping by interacting with our videos um, and also just sharing the videos with your friends and family as doing that helps us a lot all right today i am here with a real quick video on the explanation about how the nonfessa regulation can actually benefit us as consumer i'm going to give a bit of a story of how i stumbled upon this fact and how disappointed i was because it just never made sense to me so towards the end of 2020, before I got married, uh, my broker called me up and said they have this new product that will allow customers to contribute to life cover up until retirement. Post retirement, the insurer will actually take responsibility for your cover. And in an event something happens to you, the, you will actually be covered. This is because a lot of people, when you get into retirement, you don't have enough income and you are you may actually be put into a place where you want to cancel your cover. And because life cover is actually an insurance product, the insured event is your death. So and if you were to cancel your cover at that point in time, you won't actually get anything. So they're just trying to meet their customers halfway. So I actually thought this is really cool and I'm, I'm, and I'm totally up for it but if you can please just call me after the wedding because obviously after the wedding there's going to be a lot of things that i might have to reevaluate. for example i need to relook at my beneficiaries i need to look at whether my cover is actually enough for being a married woman now etc etc so after the after the wedding he called me up we looked at we looked at the new product and i was happy with it i just had to go undergo through medical checkups in order for them to actually evaluate whether my risk profile is actually still consistent and whether i can actually just um move over to the new cover but there was a period where i had to pay two covers for one month because the old cover needed to be in effect simply because it's linked to my bond and that is actually um, acting as a cover in an event i die so that my house doesn't get repossessed and my beneficiary can still continue to live in the house if they were living in the house so um during that process there was a delay from the bank the bank sent me a session letter that i needed to to sign for them to actually now uh, seed over the new policy when what what surprised me is i was covered for example for a hundred thousand and i only owed the bank fifty thousand but the bank gave me a session letter for a hundred thousand so i was asking the bank why are you sitting a hundred thousand when i only when i only owe you guys fifty thousand so the lady that was helping first didn't understand we went back and forth and i was telling her it doesn't make sense she then she's telling me she's telling me she was instructed it must be like that and eventually she got me an answer and said per some act somewhere you can't actually seed one policy to multiple lender so it's irrelevant what i'm arguing plus in an event i were to die they won't really claim the hundred thousand they will just claim the 50 that was owed on the bond the remaining 50 will go to my beneficiary so but if you actually think about it, what that was actually at a disadvantage to a customer so for example if i can put some numbers to it if i have a cover for two hundred thousand and i have a loan with bank a for fifty thousand that means i still have one fifty thousand that i can use as cover for my other things but that will force me to actually make sure that all my loans are with one bank because now i can't have one cover sitting to bank a and bank b so if i want to get a second property if i want to get a car i can't use the same life cover to actually act as credit life for those other products i was forced to stay with bank a which means that you technically can't even do an affordability assessment on the interest rate the multiple banks are offering you because you are forced to stay here by virtue of the fact that you have in your first seeding was to this bank plus if you want to go and uh, go to a different bank that meant that you needed to go and take out another cover in order for you to actually seed to that bank so the change that came through is actually saying that hang on the customer can actually now seed this life cover to multiple bank so the question that we really need to be asking ourselves is are we aware of this and if we are going to be taking out credit life cover can we not just sign up for credit life cover simply because that lender is actually offering you credit cover and you must remember that the life cover which is also uses credit cover is actually a product on its own and insurers and bank bankers are actually out there to sell that product so People generally just sign up for things without actually taking a step back and say, do I actually need to take out a new cover for the car I'm buying if I already have a cover where I have, where I have seeded a portion for my for my house and there may be actually an, enough portion for my car. But at the same token, this bundling of covers and seeding to multiple banks can actually put us in trouble because you might actually end up in a situation where your, your cover is 100 maxed out and if you were to die, and the lenders come and take out all whatever is seeded to them, 
and then that means your beneficiaries are left with nothing so it's a good thing that it protects us from having too many multiple covers and paying for the irrelevant covers but it also requires self-discipline self-reflection to see is this cover really enough if i actually seed to seed it to multiple creditors because seeding to multiple creditors mean take a step back seeding to multiple creditors means that if you were to die those people where you've seeded this cover will have first preference for them to be paid out so if you were to die and you have a 1 million life cover the and you owe bank a 500,000 bank b 400,000 the bank a would get its money bank b will get its money and your beneficiaries will be left with the 100 that's left so basically that 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 is what it, that is what it means but for me personally i'm super excited because it really never made sense i'm super excited because you know i'm still an upcoming investor i'm still a young you know adult and i'm still structuring my finances that really make a make a lot of sense so if you actually want to be smart you need to look at how what you can do to increase the value of your cover so that you can actually leverage off of the premium that you are currently paying because bundling your insurance bundling your your cover bundling your anything in, in in general is actually just way better than having you know um things all over the place so yes i hope you did understand or you get some clarity what it actually means it means that if you have a cover you can now go to lender b and say take 20 percent of my life cover go to lender a and say you take 30 percent go to lender c and you say you take the remaining portion or you don't actually have to have all your portion in the cover seeded whatever hasn't been seeded it's actually just going to be paid out to your beneficiary so it's very important that you keep your beneficiary list updated and also just taking into consideration if that you are that if you are making you know minus as beneficiary on your life cover or whatever you are taking into consideration that that money might go to the master of high court and they only they might only access the money when they are you know above a certain age those are all the things that we need to sort of start understanding and start conversating we are still going to get into the nitty-gritties of funeral covers because there's a bad tendency amongst our people where you know people take out multiple cover on one person then comes the funeral no actually no one actually want to cash out that um that funeral cover or that life cover but that is a conversation for another day i really hope you understand one thing or two from here if you still have a question please leave it in the comment base, comment section below we will address it and we hope to learn together and as usual please don't forget to subscribe and stay safe and it's goodbye